where he mentioned on the day of Qiyamah there will be shades but those shades are not for everyone they are for seven groups of people isn't it the first one so Allah said Imamun Adil a just leader any leader whether the leader of the community or corporate world so long as you are a true believer and you are a just leader you will be provided with a shade on the day of Qiyamah that's not part of my day A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Allahinir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alladhi Hadana Lihadha Wama Kunna Linahtadi Alawla An Hadana Allah Thumma Salatu Wa Salamu Ala Ashrafil Anbiya Iwal Mursaleen Habibi Ilahi Alameen Abil Qasim Al Mustafa Muhammad محمد وعلي محمد الفرج طب القلوب ودوائها ونور أفسارها وعلى أهل بيته الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا صل على محمد وعلي محمد قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآيات لكوم يتفكرون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد For the love of Imam Sahib al-Asr wa al-Zaman, with the loudness of our voice, sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Allah salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Wa ajjil farajim. Once again, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this moment and this opportunity in this beautiful and holy month of Ramadan. To continue acquiring the understanding of our faith and the understanding of our religion and to try as much as we can to seek proximity or nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verse I've just quoted, Mu'minin and Mu'minat, I'm sure it is a known verse to most of us. This verse is often quoted when marriages are being solemnized. It is Quran, Surah Al Rum, verse 21. And this ayah discusses marriage as a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what I'm going to do tonight, as I mentioned last night, is to look at marital success in three ways. And the ways are as follows. Clothing, love, and compassion. So first we'll focus on the ayah of Quran 2, 187. Long ayah discussing about fasting. Then all of a sudden, Allah discusses about marriage, where He says, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahun. Your wives are your garments, and you are their garments. You know this verse. So first stage, we'll focus on this, garment. Second stage of the examination is the ayah I quoted earlier on. Surah to rum verse 21, where Allah says, وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا Allah puts, this is جَعَلِ تَقْوِينِ as they said, between husband and wife, Love and compassion. So second stage, we'll look at love. 
and how to build love and what distracts love. And in the last stage, we will then look at compassion. And how do you bring about compassion within our marriages? Most of us sitting here are married. And some are aspiring to get married. And you know very well, there is no institution which is so dear to Allah than the marital institution. In fact, Islam refers to marriage as a holy union. Very holy. Rabita muqaddasa. Allah view marriage in a very high viewing. And so it is important, I and you, now and then, review our relationships and try as much as we can to improve on that relationship. You know, before we begin, if there is one injustice that can make life daunting and difficult for anyone, is the injustice within marriages. Simple. But how many of us are in marriages and are not happy? How many are abused in their marriages? Gonna do this when you think there are no domestic violence in Muslims' homes. It is there. The earlier we recognize that, and the earlier we admit that we are not treating each other well, the better for us. Otherwise, forget the mercy of Allah. So the topic of tonight is just to you know, inspire myself and to inspire you to say you can achieve so much within your marital relationships. There are relationships where husband is Muslim oppressed. And there are relationships where woman is Muslim oppressed. Either way, it's unacceptable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you recall very well, the first night I began this series of discussions, I made a point that the theme is towards building a purposeful community. Now, if you want to have a good community, look at your marriages. You come mosque, say Thursday, how many hours you spend here? Can mosque transform you automatically? Holy month of Ramadan, we all come. Or the holy month of Muharram. The work has to be done in our backyards. And we have to understand our responsibilities. Because if marriage is good, children become good. Lack of proper relationship destroys children. So let's begin with this discourse. It's so nice how Allah wa ta discusses marriages in Islam or in Quran. First one, or first word, clothes or clothing. Why is Allah saying, your wife is your garment and you are her garment? Kindly pay attention. You may know what I'm going to say, but let it serve as a reminder. You may be praying than any other person. If you are abusive, forget. You may be reciting Quran than any, Allah. You see, there are people who are holier than thou, and they are unfair in their relationships. You see, people, they come out, they look like angels. 
when back home zero how many people have times for their friends and they don't have time for their families hence i'm inspired to have these discussions so that we do not waste our time in this world Wallah, most of us will be stuck on the day of Qiyama because of our marital relationships and nothing else. Husband sleep, very sad. Wife go to bed, very sad. Children in between are totally confused. So when Allah tells us, our wives are our garments, and we are their garments. For I and you to understand that, we need to ask ourselves, what are the roles of garments or clothes in our lives? If you understand the roles of garments and clothes in our lives, then you will understand who a wife is to you and who a husband is to you. We take things for granted sometimes. This one wants to have five, ten motors. You talk to him, he says, no, no, it's my right. Baba, right? The woman is dying. You cannot even reach out to her. And you're thinking of taking someone else. We misquoting Islam. And some of us are giving Islam bad name. Understand? Allah Tabarak what Allah is saying, they are our clothes. So let's look at the roles of the clothes in our life. And then we link it up with marriages. Otherwise, only your salat will not be acceptable. Only your fast will not be acceptable. Because there is oppression somewhere taking place. One, or first role of a cloth, is a mola ama. This is for those who are not here to manage. You see, when you go to a shop or you go to a tailor and you want to buy a cloth or kanzu or suit, whatever, first you look at your size and go and fit in if it is your size. Likewise, when you want to get married, you have to go for your life. You can't force someone to marry someone. You can't. You do that, whatever happens, you father, cha-cha, whatever, you are responsible. I need to look at the clothes. Does it fit me or not? Is this the type of person that we can walk together? We can build each other together? Or I go someone higher than me that I can't maintain. I have to go with someone that. Two, you go to the shop. This is your size. It fits well. But do you like it? It may be your size, but you don't like it. Hence Allah says, Thank you, ma taaba lakum. Taaba lakum. Tibun nafs. Marry those you are interested in. Fathers, mothers, be careful. Yes, religion must be number one. Values must be number two. But don't impose people on your children. There are people who are married, but they are just in the house. For the parents' sake, or for the community's sake. What will the community say? What will the family say? They just they're sitting there. There's no Josh. There is nothing. So this code is my size. But do I like it? The third thing is what? Okay, fine. The cloth is my size. And I like the clothes. But is it the quality I'm looking for? Deen, values, akhlaq. Money comes later. Yes, he has to be able to fend for. But akhlaq is crucial. Prophet is telling us, isn't it? You know, 
إذا جاءكم من ترضون دينه وخلقه فزوجوا إلا تفعلوا تكون فتنة في الأرض وفساد كبير. If he comes to you someone that you are pleased with his akhlaq and behavior, marry him. You see the rate of divorce? How many are married and they are happy? What's going on? Where is Quran? Where is Ahlul Bayt? Have you forgotten? This one has watched on the magazine. You want to apply in the house. This lady wants to use somebody's marriage as a criteria for her marriage. So many issues in our marriages. And Islam laid down the foundation and outlined for us the best way to go for it. So therefore, is it the quality that I've been looking for? Quality here in marriage is what? The akhlaq, the behavior. That's the quality. Now this is for those who are not married. Let's go deeper into those who are married. Why our wives are our clothes and we are their clothes? One, you know clothes serves as a cover for all of us. We all sitting here. Some may be having issues on their skins, but who knows? Your clothes covers. I'm wearing like this, who knows what is in there? The same way when Allah says, we are garment to each other, is to cover each other's faults. You see women, they sit. It's all about the husband. In the baraza. Oh, they are my friends. They are your friends. You will cry alone. You see men, they sit. They get excited. Oh, you know my wife. You know this, that. They are your garments, and you are their garments. Protect and cover the fault of each other. Otherwise, it defeats the purpose. Is that all? No. Look at our clothes. It provides us with what? Himaya. You know? Different weather conditions as different type of a clothes to protect us from the harm of the weather. So Allah is saying, you know, libasul lakum, You are the argument, and they are your government means what? Protect them with all your existence. Don't make your husband or wife vulnerable. Protect them. Not when people begin laughing at your husband, you join them in laughing together. He becomes a laughing stock. Not when someone begin talking ill of your wife and you join the person, start talking about libasul lakum wa antum libasul It's Quran. Look at quote again. Siana. You know, Everyone, when you wear clothes, you want to make sure the clothes is okay. And you look at the clothes, you iron it, you know, somehow, okay, presentable. Likewise, Allah expects us to first protect ourselves for our husband and ourselves for our wives. Look after yourself for your husband and look after yourself for your wife because you are garment to each other. Otherwise, instead of accumulating reward in marriage, you will end up accumulating guna. Look at the next one. Clothes represent us because it, it has to look beautiful. Clothes has to look beautiful. Even if it's old, you have to make sure it looks glamorous, attractive sort of. Likewise, there shouldn't be anyone attractive in your eye than your wife or your husband. People sometimes get busy on social media looking for alternatives. Zina, your wife has to be your beauty, you have to be her beauty. You married. Your clothes is your beauty. 
People today will not look at you and who you are. They look at what you're wearing. There are places you go for programs, for functions. They will tell you dress formal. Don't just come anyhow. Allah is saying your wife is your garment and you are a garment. Simply means what? Wherever your wife is, you are proud for everyone to know that she's your wife. Have you seen people? They are even hesitant to introduce this is my husband and this is my wife. And they've been there for many years. Hunna libasullakum wa antum libasullahun. The next role of clothes is what? Raha. You don't want to wear something which is not comfortable. You have to be comfortable. How many of you, when you are with your wife and husbands, are comfortable? Allah is saying you are their clothes and they are your clothes. There shouldn't be someone that you are more comfortable to than your wife or your husband. Husband should be when you see him, you forget of your troubles. And wife is someone when you see her, you forget. Not when you see him or her, the trouble take you to the next level. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Raha. Clothes provide us with a raha. So when we are together, we should feel comfortable. And if there is no comfort in that, then something needs to be done. It's not only that. You know, our clothes is our identity. It's our hawiya. Your wife is your identity. You are her, and she is you. Min and fusi come. You are one single existence. As simple as that. Allah said, Min anfusi kubat. You are her identity. So I was telling you the other day, people so, get so excited. Half of faith is done. Half of faith is done and he's doing a haram after the marriage. But it's work within the nikah. Because you're building civilization. Marriage is about building a community, it's building society, it's building the future leaders, it's shaping and providing direction to the community. That is what marriage is all about. Marriage is not there for the sake of being there. There is a mission to be achieved after our marriages. Community problem, youth are not coming, children this and that, and we've forgotten that the root cause is our marital relationships. If I and you can make our marriages top most priority, we should be able to overcome most of the challenges that we face in the community. Husband don't have time. Wife don't have time. Children in between social media become their friends. Husband has only time with his friends. Or with his phone. Or television. Woman is left to that side. This is not life. Honna libasul lakum. Otherwise, we will be responsible on the day of Kiyama. Have you seen a situation where people or someone is in an abusive relationship and the daughters there say, no, you know what? I'm not going to get married in my life. Why? Because what I've been witnessing ever since I was brought in this dunya, in this house, is discouraging. And this is gaining momentum, by the way. There are those who tell you, I don't want to get married. For what sake? Remember, your son and daughter will become a good wife and husband on account of what they see from the two of you. Charity begins at home. Ibadah. And now let's go to the second one. So the first letter word, or the word is what? Cloth. There are so many roles clothes play. So just put it, fit it in, fit it in. Keep fitting it in. The list is long. I've not exhausted them. Second one is love. Love. 
You know, you can't force love. But you can build it and nature it. But there must be some glimpses there. You must have a sport in your heart. You must have sport in his heart. Then that can be built. A little bit, no problem. It has to be there. A little bit. Minimal. Then it can be. Even if they've not found that, the moment they see each other, if there's a spark, that can be built. Yes, we have situations where no spark and people manage. But they will tell you how they manage. Let me give you a scenario and help me out with this scenario. Then you will understand what I'm trying to talk about, about love. This, I read it, one great scholar wrote this in his book. I read it somewhere, I forgot. Where he was talking about, you can't force love. Love has to come naturally and you have to build it, you have to nature it. So you say, for instance, I come to you. So I say, Ali Abbas. Is your hands healthy? I said, yes, my hands are healthy. So can you lift your hand? He said, yes. Said, lift it. Good, fantastic. I said, OK. Are you able to talk? I said, yes, I don't have a problem with speaking. I'm comfortable. I said, OK, can you speak, please? Start talking. I said, OK, mashallah, mashallah. But can I ask him, do you love her? Random. I just pick anyone. Do you love her? He will think twice before you say yes or no. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> it's not easy, man. Do you love him? Just I pick some Tom Dick and Harry. <laughs> Do you love him? Mm-hmm. You know our kids. Those who you know you have children. You know. When you, you go to pick your kids at school, you say, is he your friend? Mm. <laughs> but if he's the real friend, yes, yes, he's my friend. Love, you can't force it. It has to be built. So that's why he said, as I was telling you the other night, love is an inclination towards someone for something that you've seen in that person. There is something that you've seen. So if you have issues, let that thing which you saw right from the word go. Keep coming back and forth. Keep reminding yourself of that small thing. Let that small thing make you sacrifice. That's love. Otherwise, if it's dead, it will be cold. And if it's cold, pressure. Pressure. Emotional torture. You're dead, but at the same time, you're not dead. Emotional torture. We are inside, we are human beings. It's nature, there's nothing we can do. Now, how do you build this love? Because Allah says, Ja'ala bainakum mawadda. So the spark sort of is there. Maybe fading, not that strong, worry not. You can build it. And even if it's strong, keep building and building and building upon it. The more love you have for your husband or wife, the better chance you stand to build a strong community for the reappearance of the 12th Imam. How do you build the love? The first one is what? Your body language in the house. Logan totally just said body language is very, very important. How you enter, how you look at the person, some people say, Salaam alaikum. Oh, Salaam. <laughs> well, life is happening. It's happening. How was your day? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Body language goes a long way in building the love. You know what the Holy Prophet mentioned? He said, whenever husband and wife, Allahu Akbar, looks at each other with love. Allah looks at them with the eye of mercy. Then he said, whenever they hold each other's hand, this prophet, Allah will ensure all their sins dissolve. Let alone you spend more time. Some of us don't have time with our wives. Time with the husband. Social media has now become our friends. Social media is destroying our families. 
Well, like, where is the family values we used to know? Our forefathers like Ramadan uncle, like Muhammad uncle, like all our mothers here. In those olden days, we may think to know better than them. We may think to be smarter than them. But look at the way they used to live. Where is the patience? Where is the sabr? Where is the sacrifice? Today, the social media has taken over everything from us. We need to go back. Look at only just that. Body language is crucial. You are home, your body language, if you are with your husband, must say something. Husband, your body language must say something. This is very important. Somebody will smile with someone out there, but with his wife and husband will not smile. It's not acceptable in Islam. Second way to build love. Attractive words. There are people when they open their mouth, Allahu Akbar. You will wish to go to Kariako and be buried. <laughs> Serious. Talking. Man. Some are too mean. Very mean. Kalabul Jazab. Your words must be something attractive. And based on the teachings of prophets, what I'm telling you now, I'm not telling you from a scholar, these are hadith of prophet and all I'm just telling you one, two, three, and explaining. That's it. I'm not doing anything here. Because I, I realize it's important we advise each other on strengthening our marital relationship. And know that you can get to Jannah through your marriage very easy. By the way. You see, this attractive verse has two wings. We have ta'bir al-atifi and ta'bir al-latif. The first part of it is what? Emotional expression. You know this example very well, because I gave it here before when I was in Nairobi. A lady went to one of our imams, if I'm not mistaken, or a scholar. She said, I want talaq. So the mullah asked her why. She said, I don't think he loves me. OK. I said, let him call your husband and ask him. But before I call him, let me ask you, why are you saying that? She said, because he has never said, I love you. You remember? So Kimolana called the guy. Do you love your wife? He said, yes, of course I love her. But she's saying you do not love her. He said, no, no, I love her. I'm providing everything. Then the Molana asked, have you ever said to her, I like, said, yeah, some time ago, but not now. So Molana said, can you try doing that? He said, no, I'm not a small boy. <laughs> you know, some men are like that, by the way. Sometimes be patient, but men, you have to try, by the way. That's not the end of the world. But that's ta'abir al jazab al atifiyah And you know that tradition of the prophet. When you say to your wife, I love you, it never goes out of their heart. But then we have ta'abir al latif. You have to be kind in your words when you speak to one another. Otherwise, the love will not grow. It will just be there. Some are in the marriages. It's because community, some because of children, some because they've come a long way, but they're not happy. They're not happy. And the third one is what? If you want to build the love, surprise gifts. You see, the women say, hmm. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Tahatu. Rasulullah says, Tahabu. Give gifts and you will be loved. Uh, 
They woke up in the morning. This is a true story. And the guy was busy trying to go to work, corporate. <laughs> the, the suit, everything, man, the cardigan, whatever. So the wife looked at him, uh huh? What is today? He said, No, today is Wednesday, I'm going to work. <laughs> ah, okay, fine. Tea, nini, she brought all those things. Ah, what is today? Today is Wednesday, I'm going to work. Give me my bag. <laughs> ah, what's going on? Fine, never mind. Busy, busy. Okay, I'm going, I'll see you later, inshallah. What is today? You know what she was looking for? Today is your birthday. And men, they are smart, they are clever. They can make your mind go in cycle and safari and marwa for that. <laughs> this experience, I'm telling you out of experience. There's nothing, say happy birthday. Even if you don't feel like it's, it's not my time, I'm looking after her, I've taken her for all the holidays. No, no, this. Gifts on that birthday goes a long way. Maybe you are not that type, that's fine. But she is the other type. And don't expect her to be like you, and vice versa. Marriage is about compromise. You know what is marriage? Marriage is not either my way or the highway. Marriage means what? This is me, and this is you. But we've agreed to come together, so we need to tone down and come to the levels of each other. Otherwise, we'll not get anywhere. That's marriage. It's a contract you are signing. You giving me the contract as Western Alim, there are clauses for you. Aji and I to know that very well, isn't it? There are clauses for you, there are clauses for me. But we agree, you have to compromise, I have to compromise. That is what marriage is all about. But if you want it to be all your way, like the seeker highway, then it's not going to work out. So hadiya is very important. Surprise it. And the last but not least, if you want to really improve and develop your love, good akhlaq. Irrespective of whatever irrespective of how offended and hurt you are. Voice out, but with good akhlaq. Yes, I know sometimes we lose it. Okay, that's insane. But voice out. Express it, but with good akhlaq. Now let, let's turn the coin there upside down. There are things in marriages, if we do, it will continue to destroy the love of the Mawadda. One, accumulate faults, and one day you open and explode. Tarakum as Fault, you take not, take not. One day you want to tell the person all his fault. It can cause problems. And Rasulullah mentioned, Al Intikadat Turiful Adawa. Finding fault in everything, give birth to enemies. Let the small wrongs go so that you can hold the person accountable with the big ones. That's one. Two. I mentioned earlier one in clothes, and it comes here again. Exposing the fault of each other to the community, to the world. This thing you may be shocked what I'm saying, but there are people who come on social media while they are in marriages and writing things about their marriages in a wrong way. Because we are planned psychologically, what is in your mind, you start to do it. When your children grow, they start reading all what you put on. Sometimes you go to the court of law, what you post on social media can cause you a big issue. And as I mentioned the other night, some of us are not even helping the situation in marriages. Why? Because she and her husband, they've gone to Malaysia. They've gone to Maldives. 
You know Maldives? Eh? They must eat me. This bitch, the husband doesn't have anything. It becomes competition. This is causing problems, I'm telling you. This is really causing problems. We're competing. Why she is like that with her husband and we are not? That also can cause the love. And marriage without love is not good. Last one, then we're done. Compassion. You know, Mawadda is two-sided, the one we just finished. You try, he tries. You commit, he commits. The last one, no. When the marriage grows, there must be a rahma sometimes. What is rahma? One-sided. Sometimes he does something wrong, never mind. Sometimes she does something wrong, never mind. But there are things that if we try doing, according to the traditions of Rasulullah and Ahl al-Bayt, in our marriages, inshallah, inshallah, there will be rahmah in it. And when we have this rahmah, we empathize with each other. You know emotional intelligence? You have to know your emotions and its level, and how you act on your emotion. Either you act in or you act out, isn't it? And the same thing, you have to know the emotion of the other person. How does the person act in or act out? So your role is you've understood the emotion of the person, so you empathize. You have to show empathy. What is empathy? Put yourself in the shoe of the person. She's not just crying for crying's sake. It's not just mad for being mad. Pause a little bit and ask yourself, what is the reason for that? So now, how do we bring about the rahmah in our relationship? Sometimes you have old people in their marriages, so many upside downs, so many issues, so many abuse. First one is at-tasamuhu wa tadaful. Is to compromise and learn to forget certain things. It will come out. But every sitting, you want to bring the old book right from the day of Kabil to up until today. Then, you know what Rasulullah mentioned? He said, Azawaju miqyalun. He said, marriage. It's like a measurement. So then he said this measurement is divided into three parts. He said one third of it is wisdom. You have to be smart. You have to be witty. Marriage is a mission. You have to be smart. He said fitna. Not fitna with tea, with pop. Fitna. Thuluthuhu fitna wa thuluthahu attaghafulu wa tasamuhu. That's prophet. So one third of marriage is smartness. You have to be smart. You know how smart you are in your business? Be smart in your marriage. You will never go wrong. But the two thirds, prophet is saying, is false. Compromise and forgetting the past. But forgetting the past doesn't mean that you should abuse someone. One like whoever abused someone in marriage, be ready to be accountable in the court of Allah. Allah will deprive you barakah of the day of Qiyamah. You know how some are very stingy with their wives and husbands? It is your duty to maintain the status you find your wife when you got married to her. That is why we are told, marry those of your level. Islam says at least, if nothing at all, every year, one cloth for winter, one cloth for summer, if nothing at all. Islam, this is our deen. How many people are depressed because of marital relationship? Emotionally inhibited. So, tasamuhu, what tagafu? Yes, you are allowed to marry four, five. But 
think twice. Think the feeling of the other. Yeah, it's easy. The divorce in my hand. You keep it hanging and you are busy somewhere. Will Allah be happy? No, 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 the key of divorce in my hand. Release your baba if you don't want it. No, 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 no. The key is in my hand. Oh, but you are busy. Wallah, let's fear Allah when it comes to our marital relationship. I mean what I'm talking to you, brothers and sisters. I'm passionate about this. This can make life daunting for us on the day of Qiyamah. You know the second factor or the second thing to do, to try doing in your marriages to ensure that there is a rahmah is al-i'ana wal Support each other and give service to each other. Service. Let me start with the dua about women and the men. You know what Prophet said? My dear mothers, my dear sisters. Prophet says, when a woman serves her husband for a period of seven days, which you do more than that, Allah will close all the seven doors of Jahannam for you. You know the word of breastfeeding? You know what Prophet said? Prophet said, when an infant or a child cries, it is istighfar for both mother and father. When a child becomes ill, it is kafara for the mother. When a child gives you sleepless night, it is a status for you in Jannah. These are traditions of Ahlul Bayt. Seven days of a khidma in your house. Your husband cannot afford, don't force him. Compromise. He's trying. I'm not saying all of them, but I'm addressing you now, then I'll address them. Don't look at celebrities and you want to apply that in your house. Don't read soapies, meat, uh, magazines. And you want to apply it in your house? Don't look at the hair. And you want to make a criteria for your marital relationship? Look at yourself and make yourself criteria for that house. As prophet is telling us. Prophet said when a woman takes one thing from one place in a house to another place within the same house, Allah will ensure her shortcomings dissolve like the way salt dissolves in water. <laughs> Marriage is Jannah. Husband the same. You know sometimes when we talk like this, some men say you are spoiling women. It's not. It's because some men are not responsible. Excuse my word. Are you better than Imam Ali alayhi salam? He would bring water. It wasn't because there was no companion to help Amir, but because he wanted to build that relationship. Amir al muminin could have spoken to anyone to bring the water. Khidmatu kazawja, take rewire said. Your service to a wife, maqamul laka fil jannah. It is a status for you in jannah. And Imam Amir said, no one will give a service to his wife except either Siddiqun, or Shahidun, or man aradallahu bihi khayra dunya wal akhirah. So there is no one amongst men who will stand up and give a service to his wife 
except one of the three. Either he is someone who is prone to become a matayah in the way of Allah, or someone who is truthful in his love for Allah, or someone whom Allah desires for him, the goodness of the dunya and akhirah. Huh? Rasulullah says, when a husband is rewired, uh, time is up, eh? inshallah. Allah, alhamdulillah, rabbil You see, when I do the man, he tell me time is up. I'm joking. I'm all done, done, already done. Rasulullah said, when you give a glass of water to your wife, ojir, you will be rewarded by Allah. So if you want to increase that Rahma, serve each other. She's your wife or husband. She's struggling alone. You're sitting there watching YouTube. Do something. John, what can I do? This will help us. And last but not least, I'm already done, bro. <laughs> Last but not least. Al-ihtimam wa adamul ihmal. Pay attention and do not ignore. Pay attention to your husband. Spend quality time. Invest your times in each other. Man ittakaza zawjatan, Rasulullah said, falyukrimaha. Whoever takes a wife should honor and respect her. We don't have time. We are busy with our world. Fear Allah. I leave you here. We ask Allah wa ta'ala Ali Rujani the new Mukiban to forgive us and our shortcomings. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to continue to inspire us with the true teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Ya Allah, we ask you, our Malhumin, forgive them and grant them Jannat al Firdausa. We ask you. This holy month, we've now in the second turn. Ya Allah, grant us the maqfira and the rahma which is in this month, inshallah. And make us worthy of being your true slaves and servants by the end of this month. Wa akhiru da'awana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahumma ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. Where he mentioned, on the day of qiyamah there will be shades. But those shades are not for everyone, are for seven groups of people, isn't it? The first one, Rasulullah said, Imamun Adil, a just leader. Any leader, whether the leader of the community or corporate world, so long as you are a true believer and you are a just leader, you'll be provided with a shade on the day of Kiamat. That's not part of my list.